All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to, uh, I think we're episode five now of Tribe Talk. Super yeah. excited to get things going. And uh, I am joined today by Chris Grippo, who's one of our account directors. Uh, so Chris, you want to introduce yourself? Say hey. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, yeah, group account director here at Ember Tribe. So I'm just kind of help our clients uh, figure out our strategies, what kind of channels we want to uh, be going to and make sure we're moving in the right direction with everything. So I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. And so uh, we are uh, we are especially happy to have Chris here because of our topic for today. Uh, normally, we cover a wide range of different channels and topics today. Uh, get in, losers, because we're going Shopify. Yes, that was a Mean Girls reference. Yes, that tells you how old I am. Um, and it's going to be heavy on e-com and Shopify specifically. Um, and the fact that they recently uh, had a bunch of announcements and a bunch of new information. The fact they had a conference. Um, so, Chris, why don't you talk a little bit about kind of like what that conference was and what some of the big takeaways takeaways were for advertisers and e-commerce uh, store owners who are working on Shopify? Yeah, absolutely. So Shopify Unite um, is their big conference where they do all their announcements. So whether that's developer side stuff or vendor and merchant side stuff, um, they made a bunch of big announcements. And the big headline one uh, is the fulfillment service one. So I'd like to get to that a little bit later, but there are some smaller ones that are kind of coming out here uh, that I think are getting a little bit less press and a little less notice that I think will be bigger for sort of the men, uh, merchant and vendor side for a lot of our clients. Um, and so there was mainly seven sections here. So quickly, there was just the online store core, the online store advance, their POS system, their back office. They made a bunch of op updates to uh, Shopify Plus, their developer products, and their fulfillment network. And so the big one that I wanted to point out that I think will be a bigger game changer for a lot of uh, clients is that they're updating to allow sections on every page. So if you've ever been in, in the Shopify sort of theme editor, you can kind of drag and drop what you want to see in terms of sections when you're making maybe your new homepage and you want to update new uh, blocks where you want text or images or whatnot. So they're rolling that out so you can actually do that on every single page of the Shopify store. And I think that's a big deal because it kind of changes the nature of why somebody might use Shopify. So mainly we've seen a lot of clients use that uh, sort of platform for just e-commerce specifically. But I think as you start to see this, where we have the ability to make bunches of pages across the entire site where they're custom, we can see different types of sort of businesses come in where e-commerce main, main, mainly isn't their main business, but it is something that they have in terms of their site and trying to get it um, working and kind of all flowing together as well. So along those same lines, they're also introducing what they're calling master pages and content portability. It's basically allowing this idea where you can switch all of your content be between themes super easily. So you just basically kind of pick a new theme, uh, you switch a couple things around and you publish, and the new theme is live on the site and it works. So before this, although you can kind of switch out themes, you were only able to really do this with um, making sure all the, all the content was updated on the new site and all the, the little kind of tweaks and changes that you needed, whether that be some CSS stuff or uh, the HTML or whatnot needed to be updated. Um, we're seeing this happen more seamlessly. So I expect to see more Shopify clients and more vendors switching out their themes more, doing more testing on that front as well. There's some smaller things that came out too, like editing orders, which is a big thing on Shopify that they hadn't done. Um, which you would think is kind of a basic kind of feature, um, but now they're out there and, and they're, you're able to sort of edit orders, but uh, you can see that. So the big one that's getting sort of the, the press and what you're seeing around here is their fulfillment service. So you probably have heard of this. Um, they're rolling this out to become a fulfillment service for all of uh, their vendors. Right now, it looks like you need probably a minimum order, a uh, minimum of 10 orders a day. It says it goes up to about a thousand uh, orders a day. This is a big deal because I think a few years ago we were seeing Amazon doing maybe like 10% of its own shipping in 2015, 2016. And now in 2019, we're seeing Amazon do 40 to 50% of their own shipping. So now with Shopify kind of rolling this out for their own vendors, we're seeing that they're, they're allowing some of these companies that are trying to go more direct another tool in their belt as they're switching over to different strategies away from Amazon, away from sort of these third-party platforms and moving to their own direct consumer models. Um, we're seeing like Shopify has 5,300 Shopify Plus customers and over 500,000 merchants. So if they roll this out to even a fraction of their customers, I think we're going to see um, some good kind of updates to the whole e-commerce e ecosystem where uh, we'll be able to 
um, a lot of our clients will be able to compete and a lot of the vendors on Shopify will be able to compete with those two-day shipping, free shipping, all that kind of stuff that you're seeing. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I don't know how long this is actually going to take and when we're actually going to see kind of an update across the platform with everything from the updating of those themes like I was talking about early, earlier and to the uh, fulfillment service. But it's something to be watching and I think it's a pretty exciting space right now. Do you feel like Shopify's approach to the fulfillment is in direct response to Amazon's success with FBA uh, and Prime? And how do you think this impacts someone who's considering uh, maybe trying to go more direct? Come, on, who, Maybe they're selling on Amazon right now and they're looking to kind of start up their own thing and go direct to the consumer, cut Amazon out. Do you think this is something they'd want to take advantage of? Or do you think uh, this maybe would be a little bit scary for somebody who's who's used to working with Amazon? I do think so. I, I think the main reason is that we see a lot of vendors coming from Amazon and they're trying to figure out what their additional value proposition is from when they're on Amazon to when they're trying to go direct. And part of that is figuring out, can we make this experience at least similar, if not better on Shopify than it is on Amazon? And so one of those things is making sure we have free shipping and two-day shipping or whatever it is, making sure that you're kind of up to date on the, can we get them the product within 48 hours or some sort of level at that? So I think that's a, a big first step. And, and there are a lot of services out there that do this for you, fulfillment services. So like there's a bunch out there like Ship Easy and Ship Up. But I think the big step here is that Shopify is already such a big player and they already have such big connections that I'm excited to see sort of what, how big this actual network is and how quickly and what sort of features they're able to roll out. Additional to that is that I think the process will just be a lot more seamless. If it's run by Shopify, it's connect, connected to Shopify, the integrations are all there. I think uh, they're gonna use that to their advantage to make it a little less scary for a new vendor coming onto the platform. Awesome, great updates and super useful insight into coming out of that Shopify Unite conference. Um, and one thing I did wanna tack on to that is the idea of um, kind of a, a Shopify adjacent idea, which, which, as you guys may know, uh, MailChimp recently uh, stopped being a direct integration partner with Shopify. There was a big blow up about privacy and security and a lot of finger pointing. He said, she said, um, insert your pointing Spider-Man meme here. Um, but uh, basically, at the end of the day, when the dust settled, MailChimp's not an option if you're on Shopify at this point. Uh, it's just too much work to try to make that happen. Uh, and so we've really been seeing a lot of folks move over to Clavio. We're a big fan of, of what they're doing, um, not just because they're a direct integration partner with Shopify, but because they got a bunch of flows and cool things. And one of the things that has come out of that is this idea of uh, handling out of stock differently. Now, with the fulfillment that's coming, this may be less of an option or less of an issue in the future. But right now, if you run out of stock on a product, you don't want to send a customer to that page and have them have no option of, of, of taking action. And so you can integrate your Clavio uh, instance collected email address when somebody goes to that page and say, hey, we'll let you know when it's back in stock and have an automated workflow that it actually tracks your Shopify inventory and then sends an email uh, campaign automatically to anybody who's opted in. So you run out of pink shirts and then uh, people say, yes, I'd like to get notified when pink shirts come back in. Pink shirts come back in stock in Shopify. Clavio automatically sends an update. Um, and there's an email. You can set up a, a multi-chain email sequence even to go out with that. So maybe not everybody takes action the first time. You've got three emails set up. Um, they're already seeing really good results with this kind of back in stock flow. Um, it's outperforming on a revenue per recipient basis um, by almost 75%. Uh, messenger rates opened at over 50%, which is more than double kind of the next best standard flow. Huh. Um, so these people who are most interested in a specific product are getting notified. So it's a really exciting thing. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, Chris, with your updates about, you know, fulfillment and then, you know, kind of these options that are in place around like staying in touch, like are more people able to move to transacting directly um, and, and things like that. So um, great updates. Anything else you feel like we need to know about kind of the Shopify world changes that have been happening recently? Um, things that the store owners need to know, things that advertisers need to know. Yeah, I think the, the last thing I would say about that, and I, I've been thinking about this a little bit, is that as they introduce this new idea of sections across pages, so you're, you're being able to customize multiple pages on the site, um, I'm wondering how it'll affect sort of all the third-party apps on the platform. So as a vendor and a merchant, you know that you probably have a dozen 
apps on your Shopify store and you have to download and update and all of these different things. And as Shopify rolls out these new features, they're kind of pushing across that edge and that bubble of what's in the core platform and what's needed for these app developers. So we use uh, PageFly and Shogun a lot for a lot of our clients. And I'm curious to see, as we kind of see some of these new features roll out, whether a lot of these things will be necessary as the core platform starts to update and put more customizations and more features that um, you may not need all of these apps and all of these uh, sorts of extra monthly payments for, for your site um, th to come. So we'll, so we'll see what that looks like. And uh, I'm kind of excited to see the additional features that they're adding to that core um, offering. Excellent. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. As always, we appreciate when you like, comment, subscribe, whatever platform you choose to follow us on. Uh, we'll have links to uh, a lot of the source material for this episode in the uh, blog post on our website at embertribe.com. We'll also have a link if you want to explore Clavio, uh, if you never have before, uh, to sign up. Um, and uh, that may be something you want to start experimenting with to get some of those flows and take advantage. So that's it for us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.